Hi folks, this is Gazwan Kari over at SharePointQuester.com. Today I'll be going over installation and configuration of remote blob storage for SharePoint 2010 server. The process is fairly simple if your organization has decided to enable RBS. We're going to follow five steps, so let's go ahead and get started. The first step is to enable file stream on the database server. So I am on the database server right now. I'm going to do start, all programs, SQL Server Configuration Tools, SQL Server Configuration Manager. Select your SQL Server service. Right click on your instance, properties, switch to file stream and enable all checkboxes. Go ahead and apply. Go ahead and click OK and close. Go ahead and start your SQL Server Management Studio. and select new query and type in the following query and go ahead and run. So this is the first step. The second step in the process is to provision a blob store for each content database. So let's go ahead and do that. This is going to be basically a sequence of uh, queries that we're going to run in uh, Management Studio. So we're going to go ahead and let's run the first one. Now before I actually do that, let me expand and go to my database. This is the database I want to be working with. Let me grab just the name of it and put it on a notepad so I can just easily copy and paste it. Okay, so now let's run our first query. Let me grab that query. Here it comes, and we are going to replace the content database WSS content with our database. You will be creating a master key password, so we're going to go ahead, I'm just going to make this short. And I'm going to copy this. Notice there's a space between the D and the exclamation mark and paste it somewhere else so I can remember it and go ahead and run the script. Let's see what it's complaining about. Here we go. So now this first query is completed. Second query. Again, we're going to replace content database with our content database and here it's listed twice it's mentioned twice under use and alter and we're gonna go ahead and run this query and the third and final query here it comes and replace it with my content database Notice there is a, a virtual directory for the, where the content will be externalized. You can definitely change this. I'm going to keep it a C blob store and go ahead and execute this. Okay, the third uh, component or the third step is to install the Microsoft SQL Server, uh, the, client, the RBS client library on each web server. So let me switch over to my web server. I've already downloaded the RBS client onto a different box and the address uh, can be found uh, you just you just uh, search for RBS client library and you're gonna find RBS 64 so uh, this is what I want I wanna copy it to this machine right here I'm gonna put it under temp and we'll put it right here uh, we're going to create a log that will live under this directory, so make sure you remember this directory because you need to navigate to it anyways. So now we're going to go to a command prompt, right-click, run as administrator. This is for each web front-end. Uh, the syntax will be different for the second and third web front-ends, but this is going to be 
the command we're going to run for the first web front end. I will put it on a notepad because I do need to change the database name again. So we'll do a word wrap. Here we go. Change WSS content. to our database name and then the instance of SQL Server let me grab that as well I'm just gonna use a share there to grab the name of the SQL Server instance database instance here we go and we're gonna grab all of this copy it and paste it in here and run so this is going to generate eventually a log file for this installation. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? Make sure before you run this, you navigate over to the directory where the RBS client is and then paste it. Good to see this firsthand paste and go here we go there's a file right there uh, we're gonna open this eventually we're gonna look for a line that says product SQL remote remote blob storage configuration completed successfully uh, a couple of indications here we want to make sure this is less than a megabyte and then there's something else we can perform on the SQL server make sure that the tables have been created still building up 947 so let's take a look at this let's actually do a control find for configuration completed successfully let me see if it's still writing anything F5 nope so let's open it up and normally you can see it at the bottom here Yep, installation, not configuration. Installation completed successfully. So this is the line we're actually looking for, which means we're good to go. Uh, this was slightly more than a megabyte, so forget the fact that it's less than a megabyte. So slightly more than a megabyte. The last few times I've run it was actually quite, uh, it was actually a little bit less than a megabyte. So uh, forget that comment. But this is what you're going to be looking for. Product, SQL, remote blob storage, installation completed successfully. Something else we can do, we can switch over to our SQL server here and expand our tables in here and you're gonna see a bunch of RBS tables in here so this means this is good to go uh, so this is the third step the fourth step let me see if we missed anything nope so the uh, there is a di again there's a different syntax for the second and third web front ends uh, you'll find this in in the article uh, the, th the, the next option or the next uh, step is to enable remote blob storage and for that we are going to do start all programs and uh, let me switch back to the web front end I just came here to see that the tables have been created close some of these actually let's not close this let's just launch uh, management shell SharePoint 2010 management shell okay and then we are going to paste the following command again we're gonna replace content database with this and that's good we're gonna copy all this now come back in here and paste okay an indication that everything is okay is this uh, we're not getting any errors obviously so that's always a good thing and then uh, there's the zero uh, digit in here that means it's uh, it's configured uh, so that is the fourth step now it has been uh, enabled if you if you want we can go ahead and test it right now but if you want to change the minimum 
the size of this of the externalized content there is a command that you run uh, to do that let's go ahead and first of all make sure that uh, the externalization is working so I'm just gonna stop navigate to the site and then I'll share with you guys again okay so I am I am on a site that is, that uses that content database behind the scenes so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my shared documents and I'm gonna add a document and I'm gonna browse to a document that's more than 100 megabytes let's do this 1077 and before I go ahead and click OK let me see if I can minimize this and go to my C drive remember we had created not in here on the SQL server box we had created that a blob store so this is where we're gonna be putting the stuff in there's currently nothing in there so let's switch back to the site and click OK we're uploading a document to somewhere in that environment that is connected to that content database document has been uploaded let's switch back here and uh, notice there's a there's a fourth folder in here let's see which one it is yep and here it is this is the document the 1077 that has been externalized now using remote blob storage this concludes installation and configuration of remote blob storage for SharePoint 2010 server thanks for listening in have a great day